now listening to Wealthy Sisters Radio Show. Now listening to Wealthy Sisters. Try to remember to go to my show notes, okay? This is new for me, guys. I tell you, welcome to Wealthy Sisters Radio via video, or shall I say, radio with video. <laughs> I think I'm going to just use my sheet here, Robin. I can't wait to introduce you formally, but I can't talk to you right now. <laughs> but I tell you what, you are here. We're making history. We are back. Wealthy Sisters Radio. I'm back because of you, all the listeners for seven years straight, and people, I, I still get people t emailing me, Facebook messaging me, like, when are you going to put the show back on? Like, I run into people in different cities. I met someone that knew someone that knew someone, oh, I know, I listen to, oh, yeah, your voice sounds familiar, so I'm like, I'm here because particularly because of our guests that we have on today. You know, it is so important to make sure here that we promote, you know, you remember anybody that was tuned in to us for seven years straight, you know that our purpose was twofold. First, we wanted to inspire, right? We want to pro provide inspiration and encouragement to the listener and that practical knowledge for your business that you could actually use steps and tips that's provided on this show to increase your revenue. And second, we have to edify, promote, and acknowledge and say thank you to the sisters for doing big things and brothers too. And I don't mean sisters in one race. I mean all across the spectrum. Everybody is welcome here on Wealthy Sisters Radio with a view. And in particularly, I am not going to hold you. We want to let you know that we are here live every week, Tuesday, 11 a.m. Eastern. I'm encouraging you right now to go to Wealthy Sisters tv.com subscribe to our youtube channel also you can find us on facebook and subscribe there now i'm not going to hold you i tell you what i have the privilege to introduce to you a young lady i want to call her a superstar but most importantly i can say that she is a friend you know, we might not talk every day. We might not talk every year because this sister is busy, okay? But I am telling you when she is, she has been one of the main supporters of everything we've done here at Wealthy Sisters. She support here. She's in my first book. You see here, Wealthy Sisters, powerful personal stories proving you can do it too. This is available on Amazon. You can get it there. And you see Miss Robin Wilson. Got to get my camera right. Robin Wilson right there. <laughs> You gotta read her story, but you don't have to wait to read her story today. You're gonna to be able to hear her live uh, in living color. So we're gonna take a quick break and bring Miss Robin on here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, she is the first black woman with a license global textile line. Did you hear what I just said? First woman with a line of custom cabinetry sold not at the local mart, but nationwide. First woman to license her name to eco-friendly kitchen cabinetry. Second black woman with a bed and bath beyond line and I am so excited to say that Robin Wilson built this lifestyle brand over a course of 20 years and was just recognized by Inc. Magazine as one of the top female founders in 2020 and you can find her on Macy's online so everybody please give a round of applause and welcome to my sister Robin Wilson hey Robin 
girlfriend, I am great. I am so excited to have you on this show today. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> I, you know, congratulations on doing Wealthy Sisters TV. What a, what a pivot you've made from radio to this, and I'm so happy to be part of your inaugural broadcast. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's funny. It's a real pivot, too, because with the radio, you know, you didn't have to worry about all this. <laughs> In fact, you should have seen me like, oh, <laughs> I got to do something. <laughs> but it's an honor to have you. Like I said, you are one of the main reasons why I said, OK, hurry up, get up, go on and do this now because of you because of what you are doing and what you I mean I kept getting these emails I text messages I, yep so well you know one of the things I think everyone should know is I met Deborah Hardnett years ago I think we were at Columbia University at some event um it may have been another location but we were in we were in northern New York <laughs> like the Harlem area right and we went to this event and across the room we, we saw each other shook hands spoke and just stayed in touch. And I want to encourage everyone as you're building your brand, think about brand you and how you come across to people because sometimes they can be your biggest ambassador behind the scenes. That's right. That's right. And, you know, today we are going to talk about building a brand, a lifestyle brand that retailers want to sell. And for sure, if any, you, you want to hear the person or the individuals that have done it. You don't want to hear theory. And that's why we have Robin Wilson on our show today, because she's living proof with all of that. So, but before we get into it, yeah, everybody knows that's been, been tuning into our show for years. We have to get a little juice on your background, oh. you know. All I like to say, what was all of those ingredients that went into this amazing recipe that we see today? So if you could just take a brief moment and share with us, you know, where you're from. And I know how your path, what, you know, that experience in your life dealing with asthma, how it, you know, you were able to literally turn something into something positive for you and your family. Sure. One of the things that Deborah wanted me to talk to you, everyone, about is my origin story. And I think if you start every broadcast with this, then everyone will um, will know and expect this. So my origin story, I'm from Austin, Texas, born and raised, a working class family. My dad was a bus driver. My mom worked for the state. And they had an entire belief in education, like education was a ticket out. But the other out was being healthy and i was a child who was what they call pan allergic so you've seen the kid that can't eat certain types of food you've seen kids who then have the kleenex because they're allergic to the pollen and then you've seen the other person who is just wheezing and sneezing all the time i was that kid and so we went to luckily um you know malcolm gladwell has written a book um and it's very true that it takes about 10,000 hours to be an expert. So my allergic childhood became that expertise. Imagine this, instead of going to a regular doctor who wanted to give me steroid medication to handle the allergies and asthma, my parents took me to a holistic doctor. Now, you probably back then would have called them a hippie doctor. And that doctor said, you can raise a strong child or you can raise a child on strong medicine. And of course, we hear that today, but in the 70s, you didn't hear that. It was just like, here's the pill, take it and sit on your couch all day and don't exert yourself because you're wheezing. Mm -hmm. My doctor, on the other hand, was like, I'm not going to give her any pills. We're going to change the diet. We're going to change the indoor environment. We're going to make sure she's active. And we're going to do what they call micro dosing. Micro dosing means if you're allergic to peanut butter, we're going to give mm -hmm. you the tip of a pen of peanut butter and we're going to watch you react in the doctor's office we're going to give you an epi pen we're going to make sure that your body can manage that micro dose of peanut butter and then the next two or three visits we're going to give you a little bit more peanut butter or whatever you're allergic to so your body builds up a tolerance for that in the doctor's office not at home but in the doctor's office fast forward what does that mean 
In the 70s, shag carpet went out. Ooh. The pet went out. The smokers went out. The shoes stayed by the front door. And my mother became what I call a cleaning machine. Not mm -hmm. with the sprays that make your house smell like a pine forest, but mm -hmm. in fact with the vinegar, the lemon juice, all the things that people used back in the olden days. So she actually went to my paternal grandmother who happened to be a housekeeper. So before in the olden days, you didn't go to the store and buy something. There was a homemade concoction mm -hmm. that cleaned the house. So that vinegar, vinegar, <laughs> vinegar, lemon juice, vinegar, bleach, yes. whatever. And so she went to my grandmother my grandmother was like, well, do this, do that, do the other. And most people don't even realize like those toxic chemicals and some of those commercial cleansers, they smell so good because they mm -hmm. deaden your nose hairs to smell anything else. They do. So, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> they so do. clean is clean. Let's put it that way. Clean is clean. It's not a fragrance. And so anyway, 10,000 hours later, I'm an adult. I work at a corporation. That corporation does an IPO. Now, my parents are so down to earth and so wonderful, right? I'm like, mom, dad, what's an IPO? Like, maybe it's some <laughs> new HMO plan, you know? <laughs> maybe you can go to a new doctor or something. I don't know. And so I'm, I'm so, and, and I say that because so many of our families weren't around the VC world, the private equity world, the IPO mm -hmm. world. So we don't know what to do. And mm -hmm. so get this. I had some paperwork I had to sign. It was sitting on my desk, sitting on my desk. Finally, I had a nice boss who came in and they said, you haven't signed your paperwork. Now, how many bosses would do that? They'd be like, well, more shares for me. They were like, until you sign this paperwork, I'm not leaving your office. No, we're talking a stack. I'm signing, signing, signing. So you and saw I, that stack and you like, I'm not, this I'm is, not, what is that? I, I got I'll stuff do to do. How, how old were you, Robin? How old were you? 27 or 28 years old. So, wow. <laughs> so I signed the paperwork. He takes it to HR. About two or three weeks later, IPO, public. I have mm. a, a chunk of shares. So imagine the moment when all of a sudden you realize, and I won't tell you the amount, but all of a sudden you realize you could do anything you want to do. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. But, so that's the moment when I tell people there are things you don't want to do. You don't mm -hmm. want to go through your files to make sure your taxes are done, right? You yes. want it the last minute. Well, maybe you need to give yourself that extra two weeks because mm -hmm. maybe there's five t charitable donations that you're missing out on. Maybe mm -hmm. there's some sort of energy credit or tax credit that you are missing out on. Mm -hmm. After that experience, I started giving myself time to go through the report. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's really important. So one of the old sayings, Deborah, that we said on one of your radio shows was the ABCs or one, two, threes. I'm going to yes. say that to everyone right now. What is the ABCs or one, two, three? You're going to be an entrepreneur. You need a great, great attorney. They're going to get your contracts in order. B, you need a great bookkeeper. C, you need cash flow. Or you're going to go down to your last dollar twenty three. Because you're not going to have your company protected, you're not going to pay your taxes, and you're not going to have any money coming in. So, please, ABC or one, two, three, pick one. Love it, love it. <sighs> Every time you tell that story about the shares, I mean, <laughs> the yeah, IPO. You know, I know. But that 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 was definitely um, a blessing, as we know. But the but, the but as we talked about, there's a whole yeah. bunch of people in our community. We yeah. would get that windfall and we might not manage it properly. Right. And so even if someone in your family has passed on and maybe you got a windfall from an insurance policy, don't buy the new car. Does your car work? Put some new oil in it, some new tires. Right. Your car. Chase right. your dream. Chase your dream. Or buy a house with that money. Don't buy a new car. It's a depreciating asset. You know, so I at 30, 2930 start being an entrepreneur and guess what here we are 20 something years later <laughs> and we are in macy's at 165 locations including hawaii guam and puerto rico we have been picked up in japan and the uk and there will be 
three different retailers, I believe, besides Macy's, that are going to be promoting the brand. I mean, everything from pillows, comfort, sheets, towels, to yeah, other things. You've got your pillow protectors. <laughs> this is a very Oh, I got to get that, Robert. My picture right there. Yes. And, and so this is at Macy's. They do run sales on a regular basis. Uh, it's certainly something that you could pick up, but pillows, comforter, sheets, uh, on our candles. Website, yep, on our website, clean design. Bath bombs, the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is hypoallergenic, and again, it's informed by my allergic health. Yes, indeed. Well, we're just going to take a quick second. I want to let everyone know you are tuned in to Wealthy Sisters TV, or really Wealthy Sisters Radio with a view. And our special guest today is Miss Robin Wilson. And I got to let you know, guys, this is the other reason why I had to hurry up and come back. Watch this. Hold tight. I got it right. That's right. That's my brother, Donnie, out of Baltimore with Be More News. He's the founder of Black USA News. And Wealthy Sisters can be found there now, starting today, airing there. The show will repeat they're at one o'clock every Tuesday, available also on, you know, download there. And you can see it 24 seven. So we want to give big, big round of applause to brother Donnie. You've got to support him at blackusa.news. When I tell you the information that he has on there, it's real information. Not this, as my husband says, fugazi stuff out here. Real information that you can apply to your life. Stuff that we need to hear about that's impacting our communities, that's impacting our lives, and things that we can use, tools, like what we're talking about today with our special guest, Ms. Robin Wilson. So, Robin, you got... One of the things when you you said about, you know, taking that money, if you got a windfall or something, you know, take it, buy something that you can gain assets from it. One thing I like to, to add on that, too, and I know you can talk about this and we'll go into some of the other things is when you got that windfall, that those that IPOs that you knew nothing about, you took the time, as you just said, to fill out this paperwork. Thank God for that manager that came in there to tell you because you just could have missed out on all of that. Right. But because you said you didn't have anybody in your network that knew, you know, your personal network that knew about that, for some reason you knew how to seek out information. And that's what I want you to talk about how important it is because a lot of times what we do we get information from our family who might be the most respected individual in the family that person might be a medical doctor you know because we got a lot of doctors we got a lot of attorneys but that attorney may be a personal uh what do they call it personal what's the the, the one that the 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 ambulance chaser i don't mean to use that negative term but the personal injury personal injury attorney which is, you know, an important uh, line of practice. But you need a, a business, someone that deals with contracts, litigations, and that. Sure. You know, so talk to them about the importance of tuning out those around you that don't have the information that you need. Don't get it mixed up on right. because, you know, this is a family person or well, this is a friend you grew up yeah. with, but they don't, they don't know. Right. Right. What, what you know they can't give you advice on what to do with that money yeah. the first thing i would tell people is you know when i received that windfall i actually went to someone who i consider a mentor and i asked them what should i do you know like it, it was so had i gone to the wrong person i might have gotten bad advice but i went mm -hmm. to that person because i felt like they were hugely successful and they would take that one hour of time to guide me so you're 28, 29 years old, you know, you don't really know what to do, but 
you have this conversation and their first question to me was not, this is what you should do. Their mm-hmm. first question was, what makes you happy? Mm-hmm. No one had really asked me that before in the business context. And I said, real estate. And they said, what do you know about real estate? Do you have a master's degree in real estate? I was like, no, I've been thinking about getting an MBA. But like, if you like real estate, you need to learn how to do real estate. Why do you like real estate? It's like, well, my grandfather did real estate. My mom and dad have done real estate. They have property. Mm-hmm. They said, then you need to know how to make that property work for you. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get that necessarily in an MBA program. You might do one or two classes. But if everything you do in your master's program is about real estate, you're going to be a master at that. So I was like, okay. He said, so do you like theory or do you like really concept where you actually have to do a Say that again. I have to interrupt you. Say that again. Because again, that's the outside influence from the family. You need to go get your degree, your MBA, which is, I'm not saying anything, but what you're saying is that's in classroom. Right. Right. You want theory? Yep. Yep. So his view is you can get an MBA and that's right. And that's a great degree, but Mm -hmm. it's going to give you a general sense. He said, Mm -hmm. if you already know what you like, Mm -hmm. like if you're an artist, go to art school, don't go Mm -hmm. to business school and take one art class, you know? Right. So he said, you know, get it. There's two schools in New York. There's Columbia and there's NYU. Both have phenomenal professors. Both have great leadership. One is going to give you more of the uh, a, a certain type of you know awareness, and another is going to make you go out and find a project. And by the time that you're done, you're going to actually find a project and develop it on your own. I want that, right? That's what I want. So I went to NYU, and you know maybe again that's at that time. Now maybe both of them do the same thing today, but at mm-hmm. that time. We actually had to find a project that was our master's thesis and develop a project. And if you couldn't develop it, you had to do everything up until you develop it, which means before you sign the contract. (laughs) Wow. That's what I did and um, found a project in Harlem, wanted to do it. But again, I'm a woman. I'm a person of color. There's fiscal inequality. I couldn't get the get this for a 36 unit building in Harlem. I needed one million dollars. Mm. And I had some of the down payment, but I needed the one million to develop it and to couldn't get it, couldn't get it. There were other young men, and I say men because there were only three women in the program, who had never worked a day in their lives, who had a great idea, who got full funding. So that is know. that that what and what I mean. What is the spade is a spade. What do you attribute that to? I definitely believe there's fiscal inequality and, mm-hmm. and even more so then than there mm-hmm. is today. And so, mm-hmm. you know, as a woman, a person of color in mm-hmm. America <laughs> 20 mm-hmm. something years ago, it was, you basically had to write a check that, I mean, if you, you didn't, there wasn't VC access, there wasn't private equity access. And even when you look at the statistics today, women of color get 0.2% of all of the VC private equity money globally. That's nothing. That's like- What, you said 0.2, you broke up. What what did you say, point? 0.2%. 0.2%. Of all of the global Mm -hmm. equity money in the world. That's, that's, That's atrocious. So when you look at that, you can understand that today things are changing. People are getting more access. There's certainly more programs to teach us from Goldman Sachs doing their, I believe it's 10,000 women that they're going to promote to get Mm -hmm. awareness of this. But it's really understanding that if you have an opportunity to learn about private equity, venture capital, and you have an opportunity to utilize that type of funding, whether it's crowdfunding, or otherwise, be responsible. And every time you are successful, you actually open the door to the next person. Because that means if you're successful, they're gonna be like, well, well, I should fund that person too. Mm-hmm. And I should fund that person too. 
And hopefully by the time you're really, really successful, you can fund people too. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's a matter of, um, you know, if, if you think about some of the movie stars who are of color, the black, the what was it, the Black Panther. But like, yes. oh, people aren't going to go watch an action movie or a, you know, comic book hero movie that's, well, it became one of the best, biggest grossing movies ever. ever. And that's because a lot of stars got behind the movie and went to boys and girls clubs and churches and chartered buses and say, go watch this movie. And then, of course, the kids watch it and then they go home. And they're like, mom, dad, I want to watch it again. And mm-hmm. Then their mom and dad mm-hmm. want to watch it again. And now you've got this juggernaut. It's mm-hmm. the same thing. Now I'm going to flip the script. I can talk all day about clean design home at Macy's. And everybody can go, yay! Mm -hmm. But if you don't go out and support this brand, we'll be gone. Exactly. So if you went in and bought one washcloth, you don't realize that one washcloth is considered a unit sold. And maybe all you have is the x dollars to buy one washcloth but you just helped our brand stay at retail and 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 it's so important i want to just piggyback off of what you said is that that is how when we say okay we don't have this we don't have that we need to have this in our well here it is you know we have a choice to support your brand okay sometimes because of well yours is it's because it's echo the price point is not going to be a price point that you can go down to the local Wally World and get, you know, the most and have toxins in the fabric. I mean, we could talk about, you know, what happens in shipment and, and all of that. Here you have something, like you said, if, if you're just tuning in, you all, we are here live with Wealthy Sisters Radio with a view with Robin Wilson. Robin has a line in Bed Bath and Beyond. She's good now in now Macy's. Macy's. She had some there at Bed Bath and Beyond and now in Macy's. And you know, we're talking about eco friendly. We're talking about as a child she had asthma and had a fortunate uh, fortune situation to have a doctor to understand that we're not gonna pump you up full of pills. A lot of you guys out there don't understand that it's not all of that 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 prescript prescribed pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. It's the fabrics that you're using. It's the pillowcases that you're using. You know, it's the rugs in your home. You know, not to mention the cleaning products in your home. Right. So yes, if you go to Macy's and you see that it costs a little bit more. You're going to pay today or pay later with your health, right? With your children's health. So definitely, you guys need to go to Macy's online and support Clean Home Design. Clean Design uh, Home. Clean, clean design, design Home. home. Get it yep. right, Deborah. Yep. Clean <laughs> Design Home. <laughs> I just know it smells good. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You know, let me tell you, we sent Deborah um, before this broadcast, we sent her a gift box and the gift box had two pillow protectors and mm-hmm. a signature scent candle it's called, called cotton. And we also um, sent her some bath uh, tabs, aromatherapy tabs that she can put in her shower or in her bath and make spins up. Um, yes, one thing, <laughs> one thing I want to tell everyone is that when oh got your room there tab Deborah I can tell you you're a happy camper there. Uh, um, I am. <laughs> the one thing I can tell everyone is uh when you think about sleep, how important it is it's a third of our lives. And our system is about from the foundation, which by the way I'm announcing here on your show, we just signed a deal to do mattresses. So in about one oh! month we're gonna have Oh my god, you better go, girl. I gotta hurry up and add some sound effects. <laughs> oh! Oh. As they say, ooh. <laughs> and 
Ma Did you say mattresses? Mattresses, that's right. So you've gone from now, you're speaking to a woman who had her own line of cabinetry, okay? I see a question. <laughs> I see a question that came up. Who doesn't love a clean home? This I know, that's Nicole Davis. You I are mean, right. You are right, Nicole. You know, one of the things we all talk about, clean is clean. It is not a, a scented pine forest. It is clean. And, you know, a lot of people don't, I think, with this uh, pandemic, mm. They began to understand that we are in the zeitgeist. Clean Design Home was created in 2020 when, and Deborah, you may not know this, I was ready to quit. I'm like, I've worked 20 years. I was at Bed Bath Beyond. I've built a brand. I'm not seeing that people are really excited about, you know, my brand. And I'm done. I'm done. And then I'll call it the say, say their name moments happened in 2020. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is really tragic. Maybe I shouldn't quit. The minute that thought came into my mind, we made a list of the top 10 black businesses to support. Do you know what happened after that? Was people then, I'll call it guilt money maybe, or, but a lot of people all over the country started buying stuff on my website. And you <laughs> remember years ago, there was a commercial where someone had just created a website and it went bling. And as soon as it went bling, they were like, yeah, we got one sale. Well, we got one sale and then it went bling, 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 bling. And my sales went up 3,000% day over day over like 30 days in wow. May, June of 2020. Well, all of a sudden, at some point, we also got a phone call from a, my book also started selling again, Clean Design Home Wellness for Your Lifestyle. And so I said, maybe they didn't like Robin Wilson Home. Maybe clean design home is what mm -hmm. I should do. So I went online, bought the website, you know, really started rebranding my company. And then I got a phone call from a hotel group. And the hotel group said, we in 50 years have really not hired designer of color. Um, you, we never could find a person of color to do our procurement for our robes and our pillows, and our comforters, and our couch. Could you do that for us? I'm like, yes. Why didn't you ask me you know, six months ago? I've been so. <laughs> and so again, timing I, is everything. Divine timing. IPO, right? I talked to you about IPO. I talked to you about being an entrepreneur, the ABCs to one, two, three. I talked to you about saying yes and being ready to be ready to be ready, right? Mm -hmm. so all of a sudden mm -hmm. I get a phone call. I have the licensing partner. I have the manufacturing partner. Everything's in place. So I made a couple of phone calls. Boom. The existing licensing manufacturer, you know what they said? Oh, that order's too small. I said, okay. So I then knew I had license to call anybody else. I went from A to W, West Point Home. And West Point Home is owned by Carl Icahn. Signed my brand. And guess what? We're on our ninth order now with that hotel group. And <laughs> that is being ready to be ready to be ready, right? Fast forward. <laughs> we then trademarked. So this is, I'm gonna give each of you as entrepreneurs these basic steps. You need to figure out what niche you have. What is your platform? So mm -hmm. you might be a great designer of baby nurseries. You might mm -hmm. be a great designer of uh, she sheds, right? Where maybe a woman's working from home, but she has a separate space either in her backyard or in her house. You might be a great designer. So that is where your brand should stay is build that niche, be the best. I have a friend who actually runs a company where she declutters people's homes. So whether it's an estate situation um, or someone is moving from point A to point B, she declutters, take pictures. And when they move to their new space, they can actually they can fold and put everything back with tissue paper where it belongs. I could not have the patience for that, but that's what mm -hmm. she does. And well, Robin, let me say this too, because you, I mean, you're not going to give yourself this, this piece of credit, right? Cause you're humble. I mean, like you're so unassuming. <laughs> but there is something to faith. Oh, absolutely. In the I, darkest you know, I, hour. Because you say you were about to quit. You were about to quit. Yep. I was about to 20 quit. 20 years. So I just want I just want our audience to hear this because 
I've been an entrepreneur for over 30 plus years. There are so many people that I know um, who have been on their grind for decades. And one of the challenging things that's happened, and I want to come back to that, but one of the challenging things I know that I hear a lot of my colleagues talk about is the influx of, you know, the social media and some things that have changed, how it changed different spectrums of business industries, right? So it's made people have an opportunity to soar in areas where others who have been laboring, you know, for years because it's more, I guess, tangible in certain ways, I, I, you know, but I'm not trying to get off onto that. What I want to stay focused on is the importance of not giving up. I will, I will, I will actually say something. You might need to give up on the dream that you had mm -hmm. and pivot for the dream you're meant to have. But you don't give up on you didn't you weren't ready to give up on entrepreneurship. You weren't ready to give up on you, even though you you might have been tired. I was tired. I broke down to the husband. white beat. No, I yes. scared my resume to go back into corporate America. Into corporate that, that was Good. Now I look back, big mistake. Ooh, would have been, oh, would have been tragic, right? <laughs> but it's always darkest before the dawn. And, That's right. and what I want people to know is, is it a name change? Is it a branding change? Is it mm -hmm. a, a change of members of your team that you need? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it that you need more seed capital? So you need to go back into corporate America for six more months to rebuild your nest egg. But mm -hmm. you still have it as a side thing at, at night. That is what I mean by making that pivot to understand. Mm -hmm. So again, we talked about your brand. What's your brand? Who are you? Are you a nice person? Do you respond and say thank you? Are you, right. uh, if somebody needs something, do you volunteer it or do you ask them what they need? You know. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people I was a victim and Deborah, you know, this, um, mm -hmm. I was a, I'm a survivor of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. I left before my daughter was two and my ex now has a lifetime final restraining order. Against him. Well, there are moments really dark moments, but I kept doing my business. And you know, there's this one woman, um, Oh, such a wonderful human being. She said to me, um, her name is Pat. And she said, you keep planting the seeds for your future. If you go to that ugly place, you're planting shoes. And she mm. said, I've never mm. seen a shoe grow. I was like, oh, like you're, you're planting a shoe to kick yourself. You oh, know, you're wow. Yourself. She said, stop kicking yourself. You plant a seed. If, if you get up and you make a little change to your website, that's a seed. If mm -hmm. you, if you drink some water today, that's a seed. If you mm -hmm. take a bath with an aromatherapy tab and just say, I'm good enough, I deserve this, mm -hmm. that's a seed. But she said, if you keep kicking yourself, you're planting shoots. And she mm -hmm. said, remember this? She said, it takes about seven, year, seven years for an apple tree to blossom again, right? You know, it sounds like to bear fruit, I think she said. And she also said, remember the walk of Job, you know, the walk of Job was seven years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So. I kept planting seeds. So remember, I left in my my ex in 2014. Remember, in 2020, I made the list of top this, top that, Inc. Magazine, top 100 female founders. Ellen launched my brand on her show. I trademarked the brand on my own. 2021 was year seven. Macy's, global brand, everything took off in year seven but i've been planting those little seeds along mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. i stopped kicking myself with the shoes if that makes mm -hmm. sense mm -hmm. okay so you're speaking to me confirming why i'm here why i am doing what i am doing today outside of me owning an insurance agency and brand development and publishing this right here is really important.
because people have to hear stories like yours so that they can continue to on and be able to build and affect their families and communities in the world. This is this is tangible. Right. And, and you know, we had in 2020 the COVID pandemic. So now yes. I'm also remote learning my child. Um, 2021, you know, my father died of COVID. He, you know, he was 82, had a wonderful life. But my dad knew what was about to happen. He knew where it makes <laughs> He'd seen the prototypes. He got the candle before you got the candle, Deborah. No. <laughs> you know, my daddy knew. And he's up there now giving me the gift, right? So also in 2021, 2021, we didn't, none of us, we couldn't have, we couldn't have imagined it was going to last longer than, you know, two weeks, three weeks. Right. We are in year three, right? And so I want to tell you something, another seed I planted. So you see this bookcase behind me, everybody? Mm -hmm. This bookcase was so I could have a nice backdrop to do <laughs> Because we're all in COVID now. <laughs> right? Because it's like, all right, I don't know. But I did not want to go. Part of my message is always about clean design home is about the eco-conscious consumer. Meaning you're trying to prevent things from going to landfill. You want to buy durable products. You want to repurpose, reclaim. So everybody, this bookcase behind us is 10 feet long, 9 feet tall. Mm. I could not have the budget. But I went to one of those disposable big box stores, blue and yellow letters, you know what I'm talking about. And that place wanted to sell me these disposable bookcases for probably $900 to $1,000. If I got all three or four for the 10 foot space behind me. Ladies and gentlemen, I went to a antique store, brown furniture. Who wants brown furniture today? None of us, right? We, it's like, oh, that's my grandmother's. I don't want that. Ladies and gentlemen, the bookcase behind us used to look like this. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Guess how much it costs? $300 including delivery. No way. Mm -hmm. $300. Not, not with the delivery too. <laughs> with delivery too. Cause they were about to throw it away. And it's real wood. This is real. This thing took three guys to move into my house and I had to move it in. And then I've learned how to paint from Dr. Google and Dr. Google said I had to sand it down and do this and that and the other. And I painted. And then at some point I brought my carpenter in and he put it in, did the toe kicks and also did the, um, and the, the molding and pulled that out. So it looks like it's built in. I want to tell you, if you're on a budget, you go to an antique store, look at something. You might be like, oh, this is ugly. <laughs> you might say, this has scratches on it. <laughs> Every single thing can be real wood. It can be repurposed. It can be repainted, restained in the way that it needs to be. Mm, that is so true. And, uh, you know, you are joining us here. We are live here on Wealthy Sisters TV. Want to make sure that you subscribe to the channel. We'll be here every week, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to upload some of our previous shows from years back. And you'll see that Robin Wilson was a part of the show. She's been a major support of us. She uh, sent our first book. As you can see here, Wealth Sisters, Powerful Personal Stories, Proving You Can Do It Too. You can do it too. There she is right there in the middle. You can get this book on Amazon. But I also want to let you know, we're going to be here every week for bringing you quality. When I tell you quality like you see today, next week, I am so excited about the show. Check this out. That's right. We have none other than Miss Tony Harris Taylor. You're talking about starting a business, Robin. She has mastered the franchising world, and she's going to be talking about helping people understand if you want to start a business, maybe you don't want to reinvent the wheel. Maybe you don't want to create create the wheel. Rather, 
you want to be able to use a will that's already in place. And that's what franchises, a lot of times we really need to take a close look at the opportunities in that. So she's going to be sharing that next week. But Robin, you have shared so much information with us today. Um, you talked about the importance of being able to rebrand what you did, you know, with, I'm, I'm excited. Y'all, she's getting a mattress. Her own mattress. I'm sorry. I'm silly. I'll just, I had you know, to say that. You know, we're doing mattresses, <laughs> I should say, cross brand, cross category extensions for clean design home. And you'll be hearing oh. more and more over the next few months um, as we launch additional products. But um, if you think about sleep, you spend one third of your life sleeping. So your foundation needs to be strong. It, it cannot be lumpy and, you know, and also, if you've had a mattress for 15 to 20 years, it's time to get a fresh one. <laughs> it probably weighs more now than when you bought it. Let's think about that. But if you then get your uh, mattress protector, then you get your sheets, and then you have your pillow. And one of the things mm -hmm. we talk about with pillows is the rule of threes, which I created in my book, Clean Design, Wellness for Your Lifestyle. If you think about your pillow, the average Time, most people keep their pillow is six years. So that's six years of hair grease, pollen, drool, whatever is on your pillow, right? It's gross. And there's a pillow test. The simple thing is you try to fold a pillow. If it stays in place, when you fold it, get a fresh one. If it pops right back, it's probably okay. But as, as Deborah mentioned, I sent her some pillow protectors. The easy way around that you have the pillow itself with its own cover, right? The puffy stuff inside has its own mm -hmm. cover. Then you put mm -hmm. a pillow protector on top of that. Then you put the pillowcase on top of that. And that gives mm -hmm. three layers of protection from the actual puffy stuff in the pillow. Mm -hmm. On top of that, the rule of threes. Every three weeks, wash the zippered pillow protector. Every three months, wash the actual down alternative pillow the tennis balls in in the dryer cycle so it doesn't get lumpy and then every three years if you haven't done all that replace your pillow one of the tricks is when you go on vacation you know and i know that you come back and everybody's like you look so great you look so rested <laughs> well hotels have to change pillows a lot more frequently than you're doing at home and mm -hmm. so it could be the pillow that's the culprit for those dark circles under your eyes. Mm -hmm. When I tell people that, they immediately go to the store and they buy out some pillows. Because mm -hmm. you realize their allergies, their continued congestion could be from their pillow. So mm -hmm. I think when, again, the zeitgeist of rebranding, we were right on time. Because the pandemic hit. What did they start telling everybody? Get clean. What did they start telling people? You're going to be home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what did everybody have to start doing for Zoom? They had to design their home. So Clean Design Home created at a time during pandemic. And one of the things every doctor I talked to talked about the inflammation from the junk food we eat to yes. the lack of exercise, to the lack of drinking water, to whatever chemicals we use in our house that we're just breathing in all the time. And they said, so then you get COVID. Your body's already inflamed and now it gets double inflamed and you don't have your body sometimes doesn't have the energy left to fight this thing. So this is pre vaccination, right? So at the end of the day, what is your goal as a human? It's to give yourself good food, good water, good mm -hmm. exercise, and rest, rest on that new mattress. Uh, With the pillowcases. Clean design home and, mm -hmm. and make sure that your body is less inflamed. So when you do get sick, your body has some energy left. It's not fighting off a day to day. I call it the low hum of toxins. Because mm -hmm. you know? God gave us an immune system. And that's, I mean, we definitely know everybody that's tuned in to Wealthy Sisters know we're, we take it from a holistic point of view. Right. God gave us that, and that's what we should be focused on. But right. we won't get get deep right. into that piece. I but you know, <laughs> as, I, as I said to you, the ten thousand hours. You know, mm -hmm. I was so ten thousand hours. I'm in. I'm from Austin, Texas. That means mm -hmm. that's where Whole Foods was founded. So organic food wasn't 
weird. It was like, okay, it's a brown banana, but the, all the bananas mm-hmm. are brown. So, mm-hmm. you know, and so now I have the luck of a holistic pediatrician. I have the luck of my parents doing all the things they were told. I didn't get a lot of red meat. Portion for 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 meat is about the mm-hmm. size of your palm, right? Mm-hmm. The if you're nine years old, your palm isn't this big, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So there are kids that are eating meat like that's as big as an adult's palm. It's too much meat, and so you know I can understand every once in a while. But he was like, no grease. You know, I didn't get tang. I got orange juice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't get. I didn't get. Um, uh, what do you call it? Hawaiian punch? I got grape juice. Um, those are the things that we need to start really taking care of ourselves because so many of us are moms um, and dads. We give so much to our children and to everyone else, and we forget to refill our well. And we need to refill it with quality products that, again, plant the seed. You're worth it. That's what right. Is your brand? You're worth it. Absolutely. And that's why we want everyone to go to cleandesignhome.com and support Robin Wilson and her, I mean, luxurious, eco-friendly brand. You're going to love this candle. But we just have a, a few moments left in the show. I know that you have a number of things that you have your hands on and you created the conglomerate, a blue egg corp. I love that name. Tell me how you came up with that name and what is a blue egg? Robin eggs are blue. <laughs> oh my gosh. So <laughs> I was trying to figure that out. <laughs> Robin eggs are blue. And my the- bonus daughters would have figured that out. They are animals lovers. They know yeah. about every animal. I've learned so much from them. I don't even, I didn't know these animals existed. So Robin eggs are blue. That's but you know, beautiful. let me let me take it to another level. Robin eggs are blue, but they're small. They're imperfect. They have speckles mm-hmm. on them. They mm-hmm. are fragile, yet mm. they're strong. And their mm. mommies fly far and wide to make sure they have a really strong nest. Mm. And then you hear that songbird you hear in the morning. What mm-hmm. if you are in a place where you have songbirds? Mm-hmm. A robin is one of the first birds you're going to hear in the morning and have a strong voice. Mm-hmm. And they are a fragile bird, but they are strong and protect their family. So a Blue Egg Corporation is my holding company that um, manages three divisions. One is design, one is licensing, and the last is real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, we're doing a crowdfund. There's only 47 days left. So if you want to get in on a crowdfund, it's $250 minimum through uh, republic.com forward slash, I think it's blue egg pork, blue dash public republic.com forward mm-hmm. slash blue mm-hmm. dash egg dash pork. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. a crowdfund that we're doing, or you could just go to a blue egg.com and it, okay. there's a link on that page to take you right there. And it's 47 days left and the minimum investment is $250. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's a, you get a piece of all the stuff that we do. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm like, why wouldn't you do it? It's a, you, it's a, I can't, we're Form C, SEC certified, so I can't tell people to do it. But mm-hmm. certainly all the information, you have to read it on your own. We've got Form mm-hmm. C filing and we've been audited and legaled up and everything and just review it and see if it's right for you. But and your plan, I'm, and, and your plans are a, a number of things. But with the, the development part, yes, the oh, real the estate thing. development, yep. yes. So we have a sixty-nine acre piece of land that okay. So everyone hears the story about the forty acres and a mule, but nobody got it. Some people did, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. my family, right? So my great grandfather is buried on this great great grandfather. Sorry, was buried mm-hmm. on this. The family had this land since eighteen eighty. Um, wow. original deed. Um, it was originally 300 acres for all the brothers, um, but they fought in the Texas Mexico War, like stuff I just found out from Ancestry. Um, mm-hmm. And they got some land and they got their freedom. Um, and it's whittled down from the 300 down to 69 that we've been we've managed to hold on to. So now we're about to do a development outside of Austin. 
I'm designing mm-hmm. houses. We're going to use modular technology. And of course, in all of the units, what are they going to get? Robin Wilson home stuff with model houses um, or clean design home products for the, for the, um, you know, for the model units. I, I will say this much. They're going to be eco-conscious. They're going to be, um, they're going to just, you know, be the best design that we can create. Um, it is not something that most people are aware of, but the company we're using, I can't tell you I'm in an NDA, but if you want to go to stillwaterdwellings.com, it's a beautiful website of a company that I'm not in, endorsing them. Um, but if you go to their website, you'll see these beautiful homes that are modular homes. And is it still water plural or still waters? Their dwellings. Oh, still water dwellings. Okay. okay. If you okay. want to go there, you'll see sort of the concept of the houses that we're going to be using. Um, and we're not using that company, but we're going to do a live, work, walk community. And as you can imagine, still water dwellings. Still water um, dwellings. Okay. And right, so I that. want people to know that modular housing is the wave of the future. Um, they can build three a week and put up one a day with a crane. These are very strong houses, steel frame construction with wood on the mm-hmm. inside. Um, mm-hmm. Everything is like sealed up, eco-conscious materials. And so if you're building a house and let's say it's outside <laughs> and it rains, well, and the next day they close up the house, don't you might have a mold issue? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> the mm-hmm. wood got mm-hmm. rained on. But if it's built mm-hmm. in a factory and they close it up in the factory, it never had rain go inside um inside the walls wow again robin i tell you this time is going by so fast um how's your daughter she is a smart little cookie oh my goodness she is uh (laughs) she's in fourth grade but she's a fifth grade math um reading at a sixth grade level um if not higher eighth grade level um so you know, and she just did her her frozen junior play school play debut. Was, <laughs> I'm in the audience. I'm more nervous than she is. She's just like, oh, let it go, and I'm like, I'm like, let's sing. But but look at her, you know. <laughs> so you're just sitting there in the audience, just saying, oh my gosh, you know. And she's just like, that was fun, and I'm like, sweating, you know. And so I was up on the stage with her, you know. So. She just, I mean, she plays tennis oh, and won a I'm not surprised. Tennis. And you know, I play tennis, but she plays tennis. She went won a third place trophy at the Hershey Hershey oh. little tournament for little kids. And so I'm just in Pennsylvania? Out. Hershey, Pennsylvania? Oh wow. And you know what this is the last thing I'm gonna say, I know we only have two minutes left. To all of you who are parents, when your kids are being the true honest dreamer that they are Mm -hmm. listen to them you know if a kid says i love tennis put them in some lessons why not you know and and if you have the money right and even if you don't have the money go out there and play yourself or research fine it's 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 a way it's a way it is a way right and and the other part of that is the reason why we went to the hershey tournament is because i said whether she wins or loses Mm-hmm. It's not about the win or lose. It's about did you have fun? And, and exposure so, too. Right. So yeah. after the tournament, we went to Hershey Park. Whether she <laughs> won or lost, we went to Hershey Park. And that's I think like if your athletes, they're like, I want to go to Disney and they whether they win or they lose, they still do something fun even at the professional level. I think we yeah. all need to remember that in our lives. And my final word would be you know, as people are learn when they are new parents, they say that the days are long, the years are short. Well, I can't believe I got gray hair now, <laughs> right? And and it's been twenty something years to be an mm-hmm. entrepreneur. But every day do something nice for yourself. It could be as simple as a cup of tea. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna give all these parents a trick. I learned this from a woman with six children. Mm. Okay. She had something to teach. I'll tell you the secret. The secret is, even if you don't wear nail polish, you can wear some clear nail polish. Okay. <laughs> this woman said, all you have to do, don't tell the kids you're doing this. 
Let's say, I'm doing my nails right now. I can't hold you. I can't make any food. I got to lift this bra for 20 minutes. Do you know your kids will leave you alone? Because you just did your nails. And you just sit there for 20 minutes. 30 minutes, maybe. Tell them it takes 30 minutes to dry. Cartoons for 30 minutes. I can't do anything till my nails dry. Clear polish, people. If you don't wear nail polish, do your nail. If you need that 20 minutes to breathe, the kids will leave you alone. Because they will follow you to the bathroom too. So <laughs> I try that. I gotta pop. I gotta do my nails. I gotta drop. Like, honey, watch TV. I gotta let my nails up, and you will have a few minutes to breathe. Well, now does she have anything to do with your project, Lilac? No. Uh, you know, it's a project lilac on our last one minute. Um, we've created a project with the Safe at Home Foundation, which is mm -hmm. owned and run by Joe Tory, who mm -hmm. is a child who grew up in a domestic violence household. Mm -hmm. um, we are with every purchase that you make of our clean design home products at Macy's. Uh, we are calibrating some number with an algorithm. And we are then donating lilac sheets. Lilac is the color of domestic violence awareness. And we are sending to survivors of DV, we are sending them a, um, a, a, a set of sheets that they can, uh, in their safe house, yes. regain dignity. Call their make, own. Mm -hmm. Make their bed, make their safe bed in their safe home. And mm -hmm. they are not wearing, they're not with scratchy sheets or donated mm -hmm. sheets, but their sheets, they can take them. They are mm -hmm. their sheets. And those are a gift from my brand, Robin Wilson, um, for me, because mm -hmm. I think it's really important. And so like the Bomba sock bottle, they don't sell black socks, they sell colorful socks. Mm -hmm. We are selling our bedding and our linens and styles here giving lilac sheets to survivors of domestic violence. Well, I tell you, it is always a pleasure. Robin, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do. May God continue to richly bless you. We appreciate you. And, you know, if you ever, 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 ever feel again, <laughs> like you doubt, like you just drained and had nothing left, like don't holler, don't just pick up the phone. Don't quit. Just holler. All I need to hear you do is just yell at the phone. Ah! And I know, I know it. <laughs> to all of you, to all of you entrepreneurs out there, keep chasing your dream. Make sure that you pivot to what you're meant to do, what your brand is meant to be. And remember, it does get hard. It is not a straight line. It's a lot of waves and turns and this that and the other and it's always darkest before the dawn That's but remember right. this one thing i'm going to tell you fear and excitement are the exact same emotion mm. how do you choose to look at it you can be riding a roller coaster and afraid or a roller coaster and excited mm. it is very important to remember entrepreneurship is the exact same thing there are moments when you will go to zero your bank account and you have bills due, but are you aware that two weeks from now or a week from now, money's coming in? Pick up that phone call and call that vendor and say, we have a cash flow problem. I'll be getting your money to you. It's a lot easier to make that phone call than avoiding mm -hmm. the phone call where someone's chasing you. Like I said, Robin Wilson, the one and only with cleandesignhome.com. Go get your sheets, your bedding, your candles, your bath bombs, all eco-friendly. Hypoallergenic. <laughs> That's what I have to do. It's my origin story. And Deborah, Thank you so much. again, for the decades or so that we've known each other, I am thrilled to see that you have pivoted toward what you were meant to be because you look great on camera. <laughs> Bless you for saying that. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thank you, sister. Have thank a beautiful you. day. Kiss your baby girl for me. And y'all, <laughs> and to all of you, please support our brand. We really appreciate it. 
Absolutely, absolutely. You heard it right from Robin Wilson. Thank you so much for joining us, Robin. Thank you so much for joining us here on Wealthy Sisters Radio with a view. We will be here next week with our very special guest, Tony Harris Taylor. She's going to be talking about franchising and we have so many other things in store for you. So please make sure you subscribe to our channel right there. Click there, subscribe so that you can get that you know, notification uh, when the next show will be there. And tell your friends, tell your family. We've got something good for you to watch here. You don't have to worry about your children <laughs> and hearing the, what's going to be said here on the Wealthy Sisters TV. So once again, we thank you uh, for, for joining us and a huge support. Uh, thank you to our sponsor, thehartfordgroup.com. And thank you to all of the team that helped, the producer, Louisa Thomas. And just thank you again to you for being here. And make sure you check us out also on blackusanews.com. I am Deborah Hartnett, and we will see you very soon next week. Take care. This has been another episode of Wealthy Sisters Radio. Thank you for joining us. Catch the full hour encore Thursdays 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern and 24-7 at WealthySistersRadio.com. The opinions of our guests do not necessarily reflect the opinions of our host, staff, or partners of Wealthy Sisters Radio.